Hello, the number of ROS2 resources is growing rapidly and ROS2 is becoming more and more important. Hello, my name is Roberto from The Construct and in this video I will show you how you create um, a node that reads parameters from a .yaml file both using ROS1 and how you do the same thing using ROS2. So we'll be using the platform theconstructsim.com. Let me log in. And here I have prepared for you a draw object, which contains the files that I will use to showcase the difference between ROS1 and ROS2. So it has loaded now. Let me show you first here the IDE. You click here on code editor. Um, let me reload here, right. So we have our catkin workspace inside of it. We have a source directory and we have the package yaml underscore parameters underscore plus one. So this is what I would going to show you. You click here on um, web shell and we will execute this small ROS1 node. The first thing we have to do is a source or ROS1 distribution, which is noetic. And here I will be running ROS core in the background. In a new web shell, I will be, well, I have to source again and let me move into CADKIN workspace and source the bell setup.bash and now let's execute rust run yaml para parameters parameters ROS1 YAML parameters ROS1 node. All right, and what we're seeing here is these values printed out to the screen. Integer parameter has the value one, double parameter has the value 0 0.1, string parameter has the value default, nested integer parameter. So where are these values coming from? It's here, our source code. Let me open it. So it's a minimal ROS1 node. We started with the main function, we call ROS init, and then we create a ROS node handle. And you can see here I declaring and initializing different um, variables, an integer which has the value one, and it's called param zero and double, which is param one and has the value 0 0.1. And yeah, you can see the others here. Then um, we use the node handle and we use the method dot get param and we specify the name and then we specify which is um, which is the, the variable where we want to store the parameter that we're retrieving from the parameter server. So we do this uh, for all the other parameters as well. And then the last thing I'm doing is just a printing it out to the console using the ROS underscore info. And then, yeah, this is the text that, let me show you here what's printed out to the screen. This, yeah, well, you know what I mean. It's this integer parameter, double parameter, string parameter, it's, it's what's, it's coming from, from this statement here. So, um, why do we get one? Why do we get 0 0.1? Why do we get default? And let's see what's in our parameter server. We run ROS para param list and we see we only have these parameters here. And so we haven't really loaded any parameters to the parameter server. So we're having only these default values. So in order to load something to the parameter server from a YAML file. Let me show you the YAML file. Um, this is the file. Uh, it's under the config folder. 
it has an integer, a double, a string, a nested parameter, boolean, boolean array, and the values are different. Now param, param 0, it, the value is 2, param 1 is 0 0.2, param 2 is r2d2, and um, in ROS1 we use um, a launch file, let me show you the launch file, uh, which has the element ROS param, and uh, inside uh, it we specify the root uh, to this um, .jml file which contains the par parameters. Let's let's see it in action now. So ROS launch yaml parameters underscore ROS1 ROS1 parameters cpp underscore demo dot launch it's the name of the launch file in this case. So here we are already seeing we um, got it's telling us that we have parameters when we launch this the names of the parameters and the values. So this is already promising. It's looking good. Um, so let's just then run our node again with ROS run and see what it does. Well, the same node that we ran before now has different value, integer parameter two, double parameter zero dot two, string parameter r2, d2, and so on. So we are seeing that it's reading from the parameter server and not using the default values. So let's confirm that, ROS param list, and now we're seeing that the um, ROS parameter server has a lot of um, extra parameters that were not there before. So that's very quick uh, how ROS1 loads parameters to the parameter server, how we do retrieve them using a ROS CPP node. So now let let me show you how the same thing is done using ROS2. So inside the ROS2 workspace, I have here inside the um, source folder a package named JAML parameters. So I will execute it. Let me just close this. This is this is ROS1. So. We don't need it now. I will open it again. So it's by default uh, ROS2 distribution running. And um, the command for running this um, example node would be ROS2 run YAML parameters main underscore node. So we see exactly the same integer parameter value one, double parameter 0 0.1, string parameter default, and the others. Let's look at the source course, source code in ROS2. So we have, we create our node. Um, right, so this is the class that defines our node. And um, we use um, this syntax here, declare parameters in ROS2. So we use the class para, declare parameters and then we pass in the name, in this case param0, and a default value. Right. Param0, default value is 1. Param1, one, default value is 0 0.1. Param2, default uh, value is default. It's a string in this case. So we have nested parameters. We declare it like this, param3 dot wait. Uh, and then default value is 1, an integer. Parameter param tree dot name default value is default string. Here we have a boolean, param four, passing in a boolean, and we have vectors of booleans, vectors of integers, vectors of doubles, vectors of strings. So first thing is to declare declare a parameter. Then we create variables. Um, and assigning directly what we're um, getting, like 
using this method dot I mean get underscore parameter and then I pass in the name and I have to modify it um, I use this this method here uh, which is as as integer or as double as string this is the nested parameter so we we just passing param tree dot weight as integer and these are our vectors here vectors of booleans I would use as underscore boolean underscore array and then I'm printing it out to the console screen using rcl cpp underscore info I call get logger and then the text that I want to output integer parameter double parameter string parameter so this is exactly the same example using ROS2 and we see we have the default values why do we have the default values well we have nothing um, stored on the parameter server there is no parameter server in ROS2 so um, but we do have here a jam .jaml file that I will show you. It's very, very similar to, to the, the previous one for ROS1. You can see the integer we're calling param0 and then passing in the values. And um, so this part is, it's the same, I would say, but it's nested. Uh, here you see this um, ROS underscore underscore parameters. So you have to add this and then you have to indent it. I'm using here two spaces indenting and then you're declaring the parameters. And this ROS under underscore parameters, it's indented. It's, it's a child, we can say, of this is the name of the, no, the node parameter underscore types underscore example so in ROS2 you have to specify the name of the node then you specify then you write ROS underscore underscore parameter and then you start declaring the parameters so they are specific to this node only so this is this is very important and um, yeah let's let me let me show you ROS to launch YAML parameters YAML parameters dot launch. So now I'm executing a launch file that I will show you just in a second. What what is it showing us? It's showing us here, it's printing out to the screen the name of, of the node and it's telling us integer parameter value 2, double parameter 0 0.2. So they are different now because now I'm not running the node without passing in anything. I'm I'm launching, I'm, I'm using a launch file which is providing um, the parameters with, with which are stored at the .jaml file here and I will show you now, now the launch, launch file so this is a minimal launch file it's, it's you seeing here we have this um, generate launch description function and returning this launch description element which has declaring here note the package the package name is jaml parameters this is the package that i have created before the name of the executable and this is the important part we are passing in as parameters we are uh, joining the the root to the jaml parameters package and it's inside of that package it's inside of the config folder and it is this is here the name of of this file so we're passing in the the app the absolute the root the root to this um .jaml file so we're basically passing this as an argument to the to the executable uh, the jaml file and that's it um 
this is how you load parameters from a Django file in ROS1 and how you would do it the same thing using ROS2. So if this video was useful for you, please give it a thumbs up or share it with friends and um, go to theconstructsim.com and you will find a lot of courses where you can learn these and other things related to ROS1 and ROS2 and hope to see you soon.